Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We've got this bad girl just about ready to go. We've got to put it on the truck. Uh, we have moderate winds out of the north, so the open water is not going to be doable at all. It's just too much water chop and a hassle in the Galveston Bay complex system. Um, so what I'm going to do is head right back out into the marsh. For the most part, you're going to be protected by those marsh grasses and it should give us an opportunity to hopefully, hopefully, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed until it happens, sight cast some of those redfish that we've, that I've been wanting to do. And uh, once the winds do start to lay low, we'll be able to go back out into like the open water, uh, the jetties to try to go after Spanish mackerel and some jacks, maybe a bull red. But uh, as it stands right now, as long as those winds keep doing their thing and just being crazy, uh, we've got to do what we got to do in order to have the best shot possible at catching something. So we're going to get her loaded up on the truck and uh, out there. Oh, right it, ladies and gentlemen. We are darn near close to the back lake really made quick timing because the marsh is about eight eight inches to about a foot above normal uh, we're right at the peak of high tide as well i am casting the slob knocker it's a wake bait from strike pro aka or actually no it's not aka it's actually called the hunchback this guy pays big dividends whenever you have a lot of surface noise on top of the water and what I mean by surface noise is you got the ripple um, and it, it makes a lot of noise whenever the wind is going so this thing pushes a lot of water it just got a really big wake and it's got a heck of a marble or BB something inside it that just like clank 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 it knocks back and forth really loud so it's hopefully able to call them in for me we're gonna we have our day cut out for us with the tide being this high them reds don't play by the rules man they go straight into prison mode pulling their shanks out going into the grass just bamboozling every bit of bait that thinks they're safe like the bait just goes from the confines of the main bayou and then they go into all the normally what would be mud and marsh grass and uh, they think they're safe. Mm -mm. Them reds, man, they got big thick scales for a reason. Quick two hour update. We are in the back lake and I'm at a protected bank. The turns are going crazy right over there and that's normally a spot that you would never be able to get to but because they're going crazy, I'm about to go over there and uh, see what it is that they're going after. Normally I would not chase after turns but because all the egrets are over there as well, that means something is going on. So I'm gonna go chase that down as quickly as I pan, I pan as quickly as I can, and hopefully I'll be able to bring y'all some catches. Oh yeah, okay. That definitely is some reds. Okie dokie, so yeah, uh, the hunch paid off. Just saw one bird hovering right up over there and I was like, he's not going to be doing it just for nothing. So it was a single seagull. This little buddy was uh, over there as well. But we've got our first school of reds. Yes, baby. Clickbait minnow. You're going to get the call, bud. Let's get over there. Oh my gosh, it is about time that we found something. Super light lure. Let's get into some action. All right, catching up to them. Here we go. We should be able to make our first, actually, that wind. Goodness gracious, stupid wind. Oh yes, we got him. Just gotta separate him from the school. 
Oh, he just got off. You got to be kidding me. Oh wait, no he didn't. He's coming at me. Look at that, coming at me. I thought he got off. Oh, yes, sir. All right, bud. As long as the school didn't get spooked, you got the seagull right there, still tailing them. I don't want to keep moving. Oh, gosh, darn, man. <sighs> Biggest mistake, Mark. Look at that. Oh, my gosh, that hurts. You just, you get impatient. You wait all day, and when you finally see them, you get so impatient. I'm using 12 pound fluoro for my leader, and yeah, well, right there, snapped my line right there where his mouth would have been. So he really inhaled that lure. This is not where the knot is, it's just my straight line and it's scuffed big time. Oh, that one really hurts because I don't see the seagull anymore which leads me to believe the school just broke up and we're just gonna stay put. Gosh, that hurts so bad. Here we go, we're gonna put another clickbait minnow on. I have confidence, or f I have faith that this lure is gonna get it done again. This one's a little bit heavier so that we can cast it just a tad bit further in the wind. I'm not going to beef up my leader line. That was my fault. I should have loosened my drag. Gosh, oh mighty. It hurts so bad. Y'all just don't know. Or maybe y'all do. But uh, yeah, it hurts so bad whenever something like that happens. That was a really nice size redfish. It was a mid to upper slot. Actually, it was a 30 pound bull red. <laughs> it's a 30 pound bull red. I only lose big fish. Here we go, baby! Oh, you gotta me. Are you serious, man? Get over here, you turd. Bro. I don't even want your inside the kayak, dude. <laughs> Cry me a river, dude. Seriously. Oh my gosh, and we stuck you really good, too. Oh, goodness gracious, man. Why couldn't it have been a mud chicken or a croaker or just, I mean, something other than this ugly turd. Head. That stuff right over there pushing in from the north, it's about to get really nasty. So I'm gonna turn on the go-go juice and let's get out of here. Just as quick as we came in, that's how we gonna come out. Quick update, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, I am paddling right now as hard as I possibly can. I've got the trolling motor on full speed and I'm barely doing anywhere from three to about 3.4 miles an hour. Why? Because there was a storm behind me and that thing snuck up out of nowhere. It was not forecasted. So I'm trying to hightail it out of the marsh and this kayak, I called it earlier when I said I was replacing my Hobie Outbacks. This is an amazing kayak, but the Achilles heel is speed. This is not what you wanna be in for this type of situation. I gotta get out of the marsh quick. All right, well, uh, there's not much to say. Yet another skunk. I don't know how many more of them I can take uh, before I start questioning my abilities to catch fish. I mean, I know I can catch fish. It's just, they take their toll on you whenever they happen frequently um, there are a lot of things that I still need to learn especially like tidal movement um, it's very hard to track down reds whenever 
the water level is above the grass line because then they can just run amok everywhere. And I've known this in years past. However, uh, now that I am starting to look at the tidal movement, I need to pay special attention to the water level on that tidal movement. If there's like a, a two foot difference uh, in tidal movement, then that just lets me know, hey, don't go to this particular area because the reds are gonna be able to just go beyond your reach. And uh, it just made it kind of tough today. Uh, either way, uh, that's fishing for you. I am regrouping, recharging all the batteries. I'm gonna take a look at the charts uh, from years past and see what it is that I need to do and where it is that I need to go to have the best possible shot at catching some fish. But overall, what a great day. Uh, I do hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, what little of it <laughs> there was to enjoy as far as the hookup. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna come back strong. So uh, I hope y'all decide to come back to watch the next video. Trust me, they're not always all gonna be skunks, but it does happen to us. And uh, I'm just showing y'all the life of a fisherman. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, tight line deal.